Good morning. Thank you for joining us for our time together in God's Word. I'm Pastor Schultz from St. John's Lutheran Church in Barry Mills, Wisconsin. It is Wednesday morning, June 15th. Let us praise the Lord today because God in his grace has made us rich in every way, in all our speaking and in all our knowledge. Let's begin our time together by going to the Lord in prayer as we pray Martin Luther's morning prayer. We pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Today is our last devotion where we're going to be focusing on and listening to a Christian imperative. Last week we heard about holding on, hold on to what is good. This morning, we're going to look at the opposite side of that lesson. We're going to be reminded what to let go of, what to get rid of, what to avoid. We are told it this way in the imperative. The living imperative says, avoid every kind of evil. What is evil? When I think of evil, I think of a horrific act of violence I don't even want to think about. When I think of evil, I think of events in history or events going on in the world that are the types of things we just don't even want to be made aware of. We'd rather not even know. When I think of evil, I think of the words that are said, the acts that are done, that make us want to look the other way, avoid it, and plug our ears. The Lord is here reminding us, avoid that evil. And yet the reality is that sometimes it's tough to avoid. Who can avoid something that happens out of the blue? Who can avoid an evil word that just comes and we're not prepared for it, but it happens? How can we avoid that? Well, possibly we can appreciate what is being said here a little more completely when we are reminded what evil is. The Bible, when it talks about evil, doesn't only talk about the things that are out there, the things that are happening from other people and happening toward us. This past Sunday morning, we had our Bible study and we were looking at the account of Noah as part of our family Bible study. And we were discussing and leading up to the flood what the situation was in the world. We are reminded of that in these words in Genesis chapter 6. We are told, The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil, all the time. Those words really hurt. And the reason why they really hurt is not so much because they are simply pointing at the bad condition of the world. The reason why they hurt is because they point right back at us. Jesus once said that it is out of the heart that evil thoughts come. And then he went on to list evil thoughts, evil words, and evil actions that people are guilty of. And they come from the heart. Our hearts, my heart. You see, when the Lord talks about avoiding evil, he's really speaking to us personally, isn't he? And it's an imperative. It is a must that he wants us to be aware of our own sinful inclinations our own sinful nature that we are born in, our own sinful desires that try to get the best of us, 
our own sin that we struggle with. So when it talks about avoiding evil, it isn't only saying to stay away from what is out there, although it does include that. It's reminding us of what we need to be aware of about ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. How awesome it is that you, we, have a beautiful Savior and the Son of God who came into the earth and took the evil of this world, took the evil of me and you on himself and carried it all for us when he died. Our Lord God has set us free from evil by saving us from our own sin. So to avoid evil really means look to Jesus Christ. Let's put our trust in him. Let's grow in him so that we can truly live this imperative, this gracious command from our gracious God and walk in his ways according to his will. The world is filled with evil. Every evil thing that we see happening that bothers us, that eats at our stomach and our gut, that even presses us with fear, sometimes even terror, it reminds us that this world is temporary. This world with all of its evil will pass away. But the Lord God has set you free. And the Lord God promises to carry you through. The Lord promises to be your rock. And he is the foundation. And the Lord reminds us that he has prepared a mansion for us to live with him forever in heaven, in paradise itself, set free from evil forever. Let's pray each day and turn to the Lord in his word for strength and power each day to walk and live in the living imperatives of our God's gracious command and avoid every evil. Put off that tendency to sin. Put off that tendency to be unloving and find beautiful, powerful forgiveness in the grace of God in Christ Jesus. Let's live in the power of God's living imperative. Let's pray. Gracious Lord God, as we are living in a sinful world, we are bothered, we are hurt. At times we are afraid by what we see going on around us. The greatest struggle that we have, we confess to you, Lord, is the struggle with our own sin, our own tendency to evil. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for saving us by pure grace. Empower us in the peace of our forgiveness to walk and live your way, to glorify your name, and to tell everyone we know that you are the living Savior, our Savior. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you again for joining us this morning. We're so glad that you're with us. It's always a blessing to take a few moments each day to listen to God's word, to consider God's word, and be reminded of the power of our living Savior, Jesus. Thank you for being with us today. We do have a few announcements. A reminder that on Wednesday evening, this evening, will be our joint voters meeting at Christ St. John's Lutheran School. That joint voters meeting will be at 6.30 p.m. Also a reminder to join us for our worship services every Thursday evening at 7 p.m., every Sunday at 8 and 10.30 a.m. And during the summer months, our Bible study focuses on family Bible study time in considering Old Testament Bible stories. And as I mentioned in our devotion right now, we are studying the account of Noah, the flood, and applying it to our lives today, and most of all, focusing on the amazing grace of God. We have a number of fellowship opportunities coming up over the next several months. In July, we're going to be taking a river cruise on the river. Please watch for upcoming information about that. In August, we're having an outing to a Brewer game. Also in July, in the middle of the month, we will have a mission festival. Our missionary to Southeast Asia, who is living in Chiang Mai, Thailand, will be our preacher. 
Watch for more information about that as well. And in early August, we will have our Vacation Bible School the first Saturday of August. That will be followed up by an outdoor service. In the middle of the month will be our ice cream social. I know we can't keep track of all these right now because the information is being thrown out, but I'm saying this to make you aware of the many opportunities we have to enjoy time with one another as Christians, to grow together as Christians as we turn, God's, turn to God's word and worship the Lord, and to serve together as God's redeemed children. Also, good news that we heard from our Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary is that we will be having a vicar. A vicar will be coming here to serve our congregation next year as we did this year. More details about that, such as his name, where he is from, when he will be arriving, and so on, will be given to you as soon as we are able. And finally, as I mentioned in the devotion, this is our last devotional topic for the living imperatives. So we're going to begin a new devotion series next week. The theme will be Discipleship from the Disciples. We will be looking at examples and accounts and events in the lives of our Lord's 12 disciples and learning from them. And most of all, we will be learning discipleship by looking to their Lord, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Let's close our time together by listening to the Lord's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.